Hi, I'm Emily Journey, and I want to help you keep your website secure, your WordPress website. So what is the biggest cause of malware attacks uh, on your website? What makes your website vulnerable? So there are a lot of things that can come into play. WordPress is a secure platform, but if it's not managed correctly, then there can be vulnerabilities on your website. And uh, there is, there, so there are multiple potential vulnerabilities that can come up on a WordPress website, but almost always it's one, right? So there's always, there's one primary cause of problems, malware, security problems on your website. So that, and this is coming from my experience for 11 years now as a WordPress website developer. I've been doing this since 2012. And I've worked, in, in that time, I've worked with all kinds of companies, small, medium, large, and all kinds of industries. And so I've seen this happen over and over again with new clients uh, who come to us with a website that has this vulnerability, vulnerability built in. Okay, you ready? It's plugins. So plugins are the number one cause of security openings and vulnerabilities on your website. Okay, so you need plugins to have a good WordPress website. So what do you do? You can't really get rid of your plugins. What you want to do is make good decisions about your plugins. How do you do that, right? So when the website is being developed, that's the place to start, right? First, make good decisions about what plugins are added to the site when it's first developed. And that's something you might be trusting your website developer with. So before your website developer hands the website over, have them uh, explain the purpose of each plugin that's on the site. Okay, so that's, that's gonna take you light years <laughs> beyond what most people do. So, so all they have to do is boom, 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 explain the purpose of each plugin. If the plugin has no purpose or you feel that it's that you don't need it or want it, then have that plugin removed. And um, so that will build in some accountability uh, that the developer needs to have to you in for putting for being responsible for plugins. So what, when they're explaining to you what plugins are on the site, they might say, they might point out a plugin that they made themselves, a custom plugin. These are also really common openings for security problems. So custom plugins are, I never recommend those. Sometimes a developer will present a custom plugin as a really cool upgrade, as a benefit, as you know, the way to do this cool feature that you want. But they're usually not necessary and they do create security problems on your website, especially after the developer is long gone <laughs> and a couple years down the road, it might not even be that long. Uh, that uh, plugin has just kind of started to break down in terms of compatibility with other plugins and, uh, and people who are uh, hackers putting out malware out there, they're staying current. <laughs> So they're looking for the latest vulnerabilities, right? So they're just getting better and better all the time. So they don't, uh, so you don't want to have a custom plugin on your website if it can be avoided at all. Um, and usually there are workarounds. You can uh, figure out different ways other than having a custom plugin on the website. So, so custom plugins, also plugins that are not being used you want to get rid of those, right? So it's really common for a website developer to not clean up after themselves, to leave the trash. And maybe maybe it's plugins that were used only during the development process. Maybe they were only needed during the migration and launch process of the website. They're not needed anymore. They shouldn't be hanging out on your website. Uh, there, there may also be plugins that they were testing and considering, but the decision was made not to use them, but maybe they're still hanging out. Um, there may also be some default plugins that were added right at the, 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 in the, at the beginning of the development stage of building the website that the developer never 
bothered to use. Jetpack is a plugin like that. I don't know anyone who uses the Jetpack plugin <laughs> and or needs it, right? I don't know anyone who needs the Jetpack plugin. So if you see that one, that might be a sign of a plugin that's kind of clogging up the drains. I'm not saying that that one's a vulnerable one, but that's an example of one that a lot of people have but don't need, don't use, right? So clean up the list of plugins. And let's say your developer's out of the picture, right? And you're, you see this uh, list of the plugins on your WordPress website and you're like, I don't know what these do. These just confuse me. <laughs> so you'll see with each, you'll, well, you'll be able to clearly see if what's active and what's not. So if there are plugins that are not active, you can delete them. Um, if, and if, there are, if plugins are active, it, it's two steps to delete an, an active plugin. You must first deactivate the plugin and then you can delete it. So it's always a two-step process, De deactivate, and then you have the option to delete it. Um, so if you're like not sure if you're using a plugin, you can always deactivate it see what happens and then go back and reactivate it, right? So see how the web, does anything change on the website, how it looks, how it functions, right? But before you even get to that step, you can actually click view details about the plugin, right? So you can go, so you wanna take that step first, right? So look at what is this plugin about? What does it do? Um, the, the, the summary of when you click view details for a plugin, um, or it might say go to website so you can go to the plugin website and you can see pretty quickly what purpose the plugin serves. Um, and so that should make sense to you. Also, when you click view details, there will be information there about how many people are using the plugin currently. Like, so that should be a high number, not 10 or 15 or even just a few hundred, right? It should be a lot of people because there are people all over the world using WordPress. Uh, so you want to see that it's popular, that it has a lot of reviews, not just 10, uh, because if there's only like 10 reviews, it doesn't matter if it's five stars, if all 10 of those five stars star reviews are that developer's friends, <laughs> then that, that's not really a good, uh, you know, it doesn't really give you a good sense of the quality of the plugin. Here's the other thing that you wanna look for is when was this plugin last updated? Was it two weeks ago, two days ago, a few months ago? All that's in the zone of good. Um, but once you get past a year, if a plugin hasn't been updated in a year, then it may have been abandoned by the developer. So what do I mean by that, abandoned by the developer? And what is this about updates? So the majority of updates that come through for WordPress themes and plugins are security updates. Sure, they might be making, it fun you know, making things function better, look better, maybe adding some bells and whistles, but the primary reason for these updates that come through are security updates, and that's an ongoing forever thing, right? So you, so uh, updating, doing processing security updates on your website is, is not something you just do once, it's a monthly activity that needs to happen on your WordPress website. And the plugins need to be coming out with updates on a regular basis. So uh, now the regular basis, that's kind of like flexible, you know, I. A plugin doesn't normally come out with a, an update every month, but a whole year shouldn't go by before a plugin gets an update because hackers are not taking a year off. <laughs> so they are finding new ways to get into your website and put some malware in there and uh, you know potentially worse. Um, and so the openings uh, into your website are almost always through a plugin that's been ab abandoned by the WordPress developer that, that developed it. And it may even have been at one time a great plugin. Maybe it was very popular, well-maintained. That doesn't mean the developer is there for life, right? And so the developer of that plugin may be you know, is going to join the rodeo. Who knows, right? <laughs> and they've given up on WordPress and they're done, right? That, that, that's, you know, that's a thing that can happen. And so a, a fantastic plugin, 
a, a, a secure plugin can become not secure simply because the developer no longer maintains it. So, uh, so, so you want to look at when was the last time each of your plugins was updated. You want to get rid of plugins that are not being used. You want to evaluate every single one of your plugins on your website. And when you do this, you'll be, t you'll be really addressing the biggest cause of malware on WordPress websites. Um, and this is something that it doesn't matter how locked down, how, how much security you have on your server, it doesn't matter. You can have the, uh, you know, what kind of security plugin you have on your website, it doesn't matter. If you have vulnerable plugins on your website, then your website is vulnerable and those secure, other security measures will not protect you. Okay. Stick around, subscribe to my channel. I'm Emily Journey. I help with WordPress questions, SEO questions, and uh, also how to, how to do this website development business if you're a website developer.